prospect of military action against Syria has thrust the role of NATO under the spotlight. What involvement, if any, would it have in eventual strikes against the Syrian leadership? As the debate among the international community intensifies, we spoke to NATO Secretary General Anders Fogh Rasmussen. Uh, Mr. Secretary General, you kindly agreed to talk to Euronews at the moment when the world is deciding what to do about a chemical attack near Damascus. What does NATO do or is going or is planning to do about Syria? Um, first of all, let me stress that I, I don't uh, foresee any further role uh, for, for NATO. NATO already plays its part uh, as a forum for consultations among uh, allies and um, we have deployed uh, Patriot missiles uh, to ensure effective uh, defense and protection of the Turkish population and Turkish uh, territory. I don't foresee uh, a further role, but having said that, uh, we are gravely concerned about the situation uh, in uh, Syria. And um, uh, it's my firm belief um, that uh, the chemical attacks uh, in Syria can't go unanswered. It is necessary that the international community um, uh, sends a firm message to dictators all over the world that you can't use chemical weapons uh, without any reaction. By doing what? How to send this signal? Well, that's for individual nations to figure out. Uh, and as you know, uh, there are considerations uh, right now. But I think it's of utmost importance that the international community sends a very clear um, message. Uh, it is a responsibility for the international community to uphold and enforce the international ban uh, against the use of chemical weapons. How convinced are you that uh, the Syrian government uh, committed this atrocity? I'm convinced uh, that uh, the Syrian government um, is responsible. Uh, a variety of sources point to uh, the Syrian regime uh, as responsible. Uh, and I don't believe um, uh, the Syrian opposition has the capacity to conduct such uh, an attack of that scale and scope it's irrational uh, to think that uh, the opposition uh, would attack their own people in areas they already control uh, with chemical weapons. So no doubt, in, to my mind, uh, the Syrian regime is responsible. Why do you take uh, the chemical, alleged chemical attack much more seriously than killing of civilians by bullets? Of course, the killings uh, we have seen uh, in uh, the Syrian uh, conflict uh, are outrageous. I mean, maybe more than 100,000 uh, people uh, killed. It's horrendous. Um, but obviously, um, the use of chemical weapons is something very special. Chemical weapons can be used in a very limited way, but chemical weapons can easily be turned into a weapon of mass destruction. And that's why uh, you have very, very strong uh, restrictions uh, in international conventions, and actually they, they, they ban the use of uh, chemical weapons. And that's why the international community has a particular responsibility uh, when it comes to um, uh, enforcing uh, those uh, international conventions. You know that Russia supports um, the Syrian government. It supplies it with weapons. Uh, Russia has a naval base in Syria. Whoever makes any uh, action against Syria, uh, are they confronting or in a danger of confronting Russia? Are you concerned about that? I strongly regret uh, the uh, division uh, within uh, the international uh, community. And I think that divided international community uh, holds a lot of responsibility when it comes to the conflict uh, in uh, Syria. Um, uh, but I think at the end of the day uh, that um, also the Russians uh, realize uh, that much is at stake uh, and that they wouldn't engage uh, in, in a conflict. Um, again, 
I do believe that it is a responsibility for the whole of the international community uh, to safeguard uh, the international conventions against the use uh, of uh, chemical weapons. But the situation with Russia is a bit tense at the moment. We are uh, talking with you in Vilnius, uh, and soon in autumn, uh, Lithuania will take part in the NATO uh, exercises to simulate um, the um, invasion from a foreign uh, power, as I understand. Russia and Belarus will conduct maneuvers in the same region, and Moscow is already saying it's reminiscent of the Cold War period. Don't you agree? No. Uh, now, I think everybody should calm down. Uh, it's a quite natural thing that militaries do exercise. I mean, that's necessary. Uh, we do it, the Russians do it. I don't think the problem is the exercise as such. Uh, it's a problem if there's no transparency. And that's why we have provided full transparency. Uh, we have invited the Russians uh, to, um, um, to learn more about uh, our exercise. We have nothing to hide. And we encourage uh, Russia uh, to brief us uh, on their exercise uh, as well. The United States um, have offered what is considered uh, concessions to Russians in terms of uh, missile shield, disarmament. Uh, uh, what's your reaction to their reaction, to Russia's reaction for this office? Yeah, but first of all, let me stress that we have decided uh, to uh, build a NATO missile defense because we want effective protection uh, of our populations against missile attacks. And we know that uh, more than 30 countries in the world have or are acquiring missile technologies. Some of them do have a range sufficient uh, to uh, hit targets in Europe, and we want to protect our populations, and that's why we will build a NATO system. We have invited Russia to, uh, to uh, cooperate. So far, they haven't responded uh, positively. Recently, uh, the Americans uh, changed slightly um, uh, their missile defense approach, but it won't change the fact that by 2018, um, there will be full coverage uh, of uh, the NATO uh, missile uh, defense uh, system. That's all we have time for. Uh, Mr. Rasmussen, thank you very much for your interview for Euronews. You're welcome. Thank you.